Well, it does snow in North Carolina every now and again. Big old half dollar size flakes. Kind of pretty. All right, guys, remember this thing? I'm getting to do some detecting today, and it's been a little while. I just have had a run of no place to dig. So we've been doing artifact hunting for a little while, but I do have a new permission. Now, boy, there's a lot going on here. A bunch of dirt hauled in and put on in the ground here. I don't have a clue what's going on down there, but that looks like maybe some fill dirt down there too. Uh, if it's not fill dirt, I need to walk it and look for some artifacts. But here's the house. Now from the road, it didn't, I mean, maybe early 1900s or something, 1930s. But look at the chimney. Under that plaster is stack rock. And the landowner made mention that he felt like there were some things going on even back Civil War times up around this property. I don't have a clue what we're gonna run into, but we'll run into it together. Let's get started. Well, I'm seeing a mixture of good and bad. Um, right in the front yard over there, I'm finding coal, which is a good sign, gives a little age. I've dug uh, two modern pennies and I just got a dime right over there. But that was laying on the surface. So some of that blue wear puts it back in the early 1900s. I just don't know. Man, it seems like a lot's gone on around here. So it's gonna be a crapshoot, I think. But you know what? I see some big trees. Good places to look around right there. So we'll try there and around by the steps. All right, right off the front steps here, we are on the board. And we have got a blurry wheat penny. Let's do this. Cannot make out that third digit, but I'm thinking it's a 34 or a 44. We'll take it though. Well, I started seeing glass everywhere. Broken glass, all sorts of colors. There's the blue mason jar pieces. And I thought maybe I'd come over here to the edge of the creek and find a uh, bottle dump of some sort. I didn't, but that was sticking out of the dirt. What do you reckon that is? Not broke. Looks like a test tube with a uh, curious white powder. We may have to just leave that one here. Probably not, though. I like old stuff. I think it's old. I'll just be careful cleaning that out. We'll keep looking. <clears throat> you can see all the little broken pieces of glass everywhere. And I come along and I saw that. And I thought it was a green penny, to be honest with you. Ran my detector over it. Didn't get a signal. But watch what happens when I wiggle it. It's a bottle. I don't know how old. Oh. <laughs> Not very. Got a plastic lid. But it's a whole bottle. I think we'll leave it here though. Well, I just spotted another bottle barely poking through the surface. And this one's a bit older. It's a shoe polish bottle. I don't have one like that. So I think I'll take that one. It's kind of cool. Well, I just found an old uh, toy gun that was so eroded away I didn't even bother to show it to you. And it got me thinking I need to look for marbles but I didn't think about these. What do we got? 
the SWAT unit. Not in the best of shape, but that's pretty cool. All right, maybe a marble will pop up. Well, I just about darn near had a heart attack. <sighs> oh, what was that? <laughs> That's what I did. Holy smokes, pretty sure I know what this is. But good night. Thought I had myself a belt buckle. But I still think it's a pretty cool little find. I think we got a triple A. An older triple A badge. So it looks like to me. Let me clean it off and see what the rest of it says. It looks like a pretty cool find. There you go. The Carolina Motor Club. I'm not sure how old it is. But I bet you there's a story there. The Carolina Motor Club. I wasn't sure what to make of this find. As I researched it, I found out the Carolina Motor Club actually started back in 1922 in Greensboro, North Carolina. Now it surprised me that it was that old. When I think of motor club, what comes to mind is a group of middle-aged men driving a string of Mazda Miatas down the highway. Well, I couldn't be further from the truth there. The history of the auto club is just as old as the history of the automobile in the United States. Back in 1908, Henry Ford began to mass produce his Model T and it caught on quick. People began buying cars, but the proud owner of these new cars learned something quickly. The vast majority of roads in this country were unsuitable, unsuitable for automobile traffic. The horses and wagons left them deeply rutted and Lord help you if you got stuck out in the rain. Better roads were needed. So these auto clubs banded together and began to lobby for just that. And the government listened. And pretty soon, road work was being done to make the roads passable for automobiles. But this didn't happen overnight. And so it was a fairly uncertain thing to take off in a car and begin a cross-country trip. You were likely to get yourself in a predicament. So the auto clubs began to produce maps. These maps showed safe routes between towns. Also, think about it, there weren't gas stations on every corner. You needed to know where you could find fuel. Or if you broke down, where you could happen to run across a mechanic that knew how to work on these new things. Here's something that'll help you with dating a property. Just pulled this old bottle piece out, and if you look, it's starting to take on a purplish hue. But more important than that, is this line that runs right up the side of the bottle here. See it reflecting in the light? That's the mold seam. That mold seam stops right about there. And eh, some people say that puts it back in the 1880s. I don't think so for this bottle, but I think it puts it pre-1920. Not an expert, but that's just kind of the best that I'm that I've learned. So, that's interesting. Sure wish I could find a coin or a relic from that time frame. All right, we are on ground and searching, and uh, no luck in the spring looking for artifacts, so I started swinging the detector around and right there on that bare spot, just as clear as day, was that. That is a pretty piece of blade. Very, very thin, but worked from both sides. That is pretty dang awesome right there. I'd love to see the back of it. So, got an artifact anyway. Haven't popped up much detecting, but I'm gonna keep looking. Red is moseying around with no tools today, but he don't need it to run across something cool. Check out that old glass. Got strawberries on it. That is pretty. And it's... Let me just jump in here and talk about purple glass for a second. And how people date it. Now there's a little debate on this, but here's the gist of it. 
manganese was used in most class formulas back in the early 1900s. And manganese is mined in Germany. Well, with the outbreak of World War I, the U.S. stopped purchasing manganese and started using other things in the glass formula. Now, when manganese is, is exposed to sunlight, it turns a shade of purple. So the idea is if you find purple glass, chances are it predates 1914. That's not always the case, but if you're at a real early 1900 site, it's pretty good rule of thumb. That's about the best I know on it though. Guys, there's been a lot of holes punched and nothing to show for it, but I did just get a cool relic. Hadn't found one of those in a while. And it'll be interesting to see if there's any design left on it, but it's a pocket watch back. Pretty cool. I don't know if we'll get a design off of it or not, but I'll sure try. Well, sometimes when you get whooped, ain't finding what you thought you'd find. Just sit down and enjoy the afternoon. That's what I'm gonna do. I got a few minutes left. Red's still poking holes around with his stick over there. He'll probably find the mother load. Yep. I'm gonna watch the sun go down. And I'll catch you guys later.